my wife is standing right here. I've uh, been married for close to 30 years, and if it wasn't for her, I could, none of this would be possible. I probably would not be here. I'd probably be somewhere hiding under a bed. So uh, thank you to her. And then thank you to everybody who's, uh, who supports me on social media, watch my speech, sent me kind words, even sent me gifts. I just can't say enough how blown away and how humbled I am by all the support that I've uh, received because of that little four minute video. And also uh, the amount of blessing I feel that it's inspired so many people. I I'd love to see a million people go out and do the exact same thing because that's exactly what we need. So thank you to everybody who's shown me support and love because of it. Now, let's get down to what we're here for. And I guess all of you all saw my video and you know I talk loud, so I probably don't even need this microphone. But I'm going to talk as loud as I can because I want this whole state and this whole nation to hear me. Yes, sir. It is time for the law-abiding citizens of this country to get as loud and proud with their message as the left has with their lives. Yeah. Now, I tell you, we just, had some, we just had some young folks over here in the corner over here talking, and I was over here listening to them. And everything they repeated was statistics and this and that. All of it probably given to them by some communist, some leftist, some socialist. But let me tell you this. There's an element to this that everybody forgets, and it's this. It's common sense. <laughs> There's a common sense element to all this. The bottom line is this, whether you like it or not, the world is made up of predator and prey. Prey is defenseless. Predators are not. We can defend ourselves from predators because, because our God in heaven endowed us with the inalienable right to arm ourselves with whatever we see fit to protect ourselves, whether it be from criminals or a tyrannical government or whatever it may be. And the one thing that these children do not understand is the world is not made of rainbows and lollipops. There are people right here close to this state house that will cut your throat for a dollar. And they'll do it for sure if you don't have a way to defend yourself. They had better wake up and they had better wake up quick. They better crack open the Bible and right next to it they better crack open a history book. And they better take some lessons from both. Because the defenseless always, they always end up at the, under the thumb of tyrants and despots. Always. You go back and you look through history. You look at Lenin, and you look at Stalin, and you look at Hitler, and you look at Mao, and you look at Castro. What did all of them do? They took the guns. You look at the British government. Before our revolution started, why did they come here? They didn't come here to shut down a newspaper. They came here to seize the arsenal because they knew with that arsenal we could protect our freedom, to gain our freedom from them, and that's exactly what we did. So again, these young people need to wake up and smell the coffee and realize that Second Amendment, if we continue to let it be diminished, it's already been diminished enough. If we continue to let it be diminished, the forces that want to will destroy it and wipe it away. And once it's gone, guess what's going to be silenced next? It's not just your guns, it's going to be your mouths, your opinions, your thought. It's all going to be shut down. The only reason you have the ability to speak up and be a free person is because you have the ability to defend your freedom. And you don't defend your freedom with a pen. You defend your freedom with, at the point of a gun. It's always happened that way. We write our laws, but we don't send our police officers on to the streets with law books. We send them on to the streets with guns because that's what it takes to defend our laws. It takes firearms, it takes weapons. And I'm telling you right now, folks, you can look at who's, who it is that's trying to take these rights away. You look at what they want to do. One of the things I always look at is this. Most of these folks think it's okay to murder an infant in the womb. They think it's okay to go in and take a fully formed human being, crush his brain, suck his brains out, pull his body out, and discard it like trash or sell the parts. So what does that tell you about me and you? If they're willing 
to kill the most innocent and defenseless among us. What do you think they'll do to their enemies that are trying to stand up against oh, yeah. them? When folks like that tell you you don't need a gun, guess what you need? A gun. You need a gun. Yes, sir. And you look at, look at another issue that's going on right now. You look at our borders. These folks want to open up our borders and allow any and everybody to come here, unvetted, unchecked. Now, certainly there are a lot of people that are coming in this country for the right reasons because they're running away from drugs and crime and gangs and corrupt governments. But if we open up the door and allow those people to come in unchecked, Guess who's going to be right behind them? The drugs, the guns, the crime, the gangs, and the corrupt politicians are going to follow them right up here. So when people who want open borders tell you, oh, you don't need an AR-15 for anything, guess what you need? An AR Two AR-15s. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Now... There's something I left out of this that I, I would be remiss if I didn't say it, and I plan on saying this every time I speak about this subject. A lot of people say that our Second Amendment, our Constitution, gives us our rights. That is not the case, folks. They affirm our rights. But you make no mistake about it. Our Father in Heaven endowed us with those rights. To every animal on this planet, He has given the, the ability to defend itself. He's given the the bear has giant claws and the shark has its fangs and its ability to swim. All of those animals have the right to defend themselves and feed themselves with the weapons that God has given them. But to man, what he gave to us was the ability to make machinery. And some of that machinery is meant to be used for our defense. Now I want you to hear this leftists, all of you, from the media to the ones in the government. You can come for my guns all you want to. You can come after them all you want to, but I am not giving one inch. We don't need to give one dot, one tittle, not anything. Because I'm going to tell you what, folks, if you haven't noticed throughout history, gun control in countries has never happened just all of a sudden. It's always been on the slippery slope. And in this country, the leftists know all the guns, all the gun owners, all of you, me, all of us, they know that that's a giant elephant that they've got to overcome. Now, how do you over overcome an elephant? What do they say? One bite at a time. One bite at a time. But in this case, my brother, it's one right at a time. So we got to hold on to each and every one of those rights and make sure we don't give an inch on this Second Amendment. Because anybody that can't see what's happening is either blind, dead, or a fool. They are absolutely trying to destroy our Constitution. And they know that the only way, the only way to take your rights away is to take away your ability to be able to defend your rights. So folks, I'm encouraging each and every one of you all to stand up and be courageous and stand up for your rights. That's one of the things everybody thanks me for all the time. They talk, thank me for standing up with courage. There's a lot of people out there that's doing the same thing. And I encourage you all to, do, to, to keep doing that. Because this is a fight, folks. This is not just a fight for us, but it's a fight for future generations, for our kids and our grandchildren and their children. I want to leave my grandson the same kind of country that Thomas Jefferson and Thomas Jefferson and George Washington and every other man that's fought for our freedom left me. Now, leaving you, I want to leave you with this. There's a controversial phrase that's going around sweeping the nation, so to speak, by our president says, make America great again. Yeah. 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 I'm going to tell you something about yeah. make America great again. Somebody on my social media page asked me, when was America ever great? This is what I told them. I told them America was great at Bunker Hill, and it was great, it was great at Bunker Hill, and it was great at Lexington and Concord. When the founders of this nation, the ordinary men and women, stood up and fought the mightiest army in the world to secure our freedom, that's when America was great. America was great at Gettysburg and Fredericksburg and Antietam. When sons of this nation fought to put this nation back together and end the terrible legacy of slavery, America was great at D-Day and the Battle of the Bulge and at Iwo Jima when we fought the Japanese, the tyranny of the Japanese and the tyranny of the, tyranny of the Nazis.
Monty. It was great at Pork Chop Hill, and it was great at K Sam when we fought the communists in the Far East. The simple fact of the matter is this America has never not been great. <laughs> is we have too many politicians, we had one in the White House for eight years, that try to hide the shining light of America underneath the rock for the purpose of extinguishing it. Well, guess what's not going to happen? That's not going to happen. We're going to shine our light and we're going to defend our light rights come hell or high water. Thank you very much. God bless America. God Thank bless you all for being here. I feel sorry for Paul Puella because he's got to follow that. <laughs> that that was that was incredible, you know. Uh, Mark is, is one of the most incredible speakers I've ever heard in my life, and he continues to be in every single speech.